session discuss about deflection of RCC elements that is beams and slabs and let us see the concept and requirements of Indian standard 456-2000 Introduction RCC members are to be designed to conform to limit state of strength as well as limit state of serviceability The primary serviceability conditions are Members should not undergo excessive deformation under the service loads or allowable loads. This limit state is nothing but limit state of deflection. Crack width on the surface of RCC members under service loads should be limited to values prescribed in the course of practice. This limit state is nothing but limit state of cracking. Table number 18 of IS 456-2000 code outlines the combinations of loads for serviceability conditions. Largest value to be used for the computations. Load combinations given in the table are 1 times dead load plus 1 times live load. Second is 1 times dead load plus 1 times of wind load. Third is 1 times dead load plus 0.8 times of live load plus 0.8 times of wind load or earthquake load. Codes prescribe two methods for deflection control. One is empirical method that is span L by effective depth D ratio of structural members are limited to specified values in the codes. And then theoretical method that is the actual deflection is calculated and checked with the codified permissible deflections. We know that in earlier days, FE 250 steel was used, that is mine steel was used. But in last few decades, due to widespread use of high grade steels, that is FE 415 and FE 500, and also combined with use of high performance concrete, there are changes necessary in deflection as well because this results in slender structural elements it is obvious that when we are going for high performance concrete and high grade steel then the dimensions of the structural members like beam and slab required will be very less and so the members will become slender that is thin this requires greater attention to deflection and cracks let us see codified deflection limits. The excessive deflection of deflectural members that is beams and slabs, it causes distress to the users of the structure. It is also likely to cause cracking of partitions. IS 456-2000 clause number 23.2 talks about the accepted limits to permissible deflections and they are the finite deflection including effects of all loads, temperature, creep and shrinkage of horizontal structural members should not exceed span L by 250. Again it says the deflection including effects of temperature, creep and shrinkage occurring after the erection of partitions and application of finishes should not exceed span L upon 350 or 20 mm whichever is less that means out of L by 350 and 20mm whichever is less that IS code specifies. Deflection control in beams and slabs, empirical method. Now let us see what is theoretical basis of empirical method. The empirical method is based on principle of expressing deflection delta divided by span L that is delta by L ratio of beams or slabs in terms of span L by effective depth D ratio. Values of material properties are assumed constant that is bending stresses and Young's modulus. Now let us see. This is a simply supported beam and it carries a uniformly distributed load of W per unit run. Now because of UDL we have learnt in structural analysis that the maximum deflection will be at the center delta. 
the central deflection that is maximum deflection of a beam carrying a UDL is delta that is the central deflection here will be pi by 384 WL raised to 4 upon EI where EI is the flexor rigidity I is moment of inertia and E is angst modulus this formula can be calculated or this expression is from structure analysis we can prove this either by using conjugate beam method moment area method or double integration method unit load method or casting lanos method again i can rearrange the terms delta equal to phi by 48 wl square upon 8 l square by ei equation number one but we know that wl square by 8 is nothing but maximum bending moment occurring at the center of a beam when the beam of length L is carrying UDL of W per unit run. So equation 1 becomes delta equal to phi by 48 instead of WL square by 8 it is M max that is maximum bending moment or maximum moment of resistance into L square by EI equation number 2. We know that from pure bending theory M by I equal to sigma by Y where M is nothing but moment of resistance, I is moment of inertia of the section, for example if it is a rectangular section, then it is BD cube by 12, where B is the width and D is the depth, sigma is the bending stress, if simply supported beam is there, we know that bending stress is compressive above the neutral axis and it is tensile below the, ne below the neutral axis, and Y is nothing but the distance between the neutral axis and the point under consideration or the fiber under consideration but we know that the extreme compressive stress and extreme tensile stress will occur at the extreme top and bottom fibers above and below neutral axis respectively therefore y obviously is d by 2 so when i cross multiply m becomes sigma into i divided by y and when I substitute y equal to d by 2, it becomes 2 sigma into i by d, that is 2 times of bending stress into moment of inertia divided by effective depth. Substituting m max equal to 2 sigma i by d in equation delta equal to phi by 48 m max l square by ei, we get delta equal to phi by 48 2 sigma i by d l square divided by ei and therefore if i rearrange the terms delta by l that is central deflection divided by span equal to phi by 24 sigma divided by e into l divided by d from equation 3 we come to know that central deflection delta divided by span l is a function of span by effective depth if we assume sigma and angst modulus to be constant. Let me repeat, from equation 3, we come to know that the central deflection divided by span L is a function of L by D. If we assume sigma and the value of angst modulus, that is bending stress and modulus of elasticity. For example, let us assume that the bending stress is phi Newton per mm square and angst modulus for material is 1 into 10 to 4 Newton per mm square or mega Pascal and as per one of the clauses of IS code already we have seen that delta by L is 1 upon 350. So therefore substituting all these values in equation 3 1 upon 350 is phi by 24 sigma is phi divided by angst modulus is 1 into 10 to 4 into L by D and therefore when I do solve L by D becomes 27.428. So by doing this, we can calculate the span by effective depth, so it is 27.428 for the assumed sigma and assumed length modulus. Assuming bending stress and length modulus as constant, the permissible delta by L can be controlled by L by D. Let me again repeat, that means if we take a value of bending stress and modulus of elasticity, then the permissible deflection by span ratio can be very much controlled by span by effective depth ratio.
the Indian Standard 4562000 recommendations are based on this principle. Basic span by depth ratios. IS 4562000 considers the following two factors: span by effective depth ratios, percentage tension PT percentage, and compression steel that is PC percentage. Then type of beam, whether it is rectangular or flanged, flange means T beam or L beam. Type of supports that is simple, fixed, or continuous. This is the table I was talking about. Table one, basic L by D ratios for beams and slabs as per clause 23.2.1 of IS 4562000. That is for cantilever, simply supported and continuous. If it is a rectangular section, then for cantilever, the L by D ratio is seven. For simply supported, the L by D ratio is twenty, whereas for continuous structure, it is twenty-six. Now, if it is a flanged section, then you have to multiply these values by a factor called as K F. K is a factor F stands for flange. So the above table for L is valid only if the structural elements length is up to ten meter. IS code says that if the length is more than ten meter, then the ratios are to be multiplied by a factor F that is equal to ten divided by L in meters. But for cantilevers greater than 10 meter, the code says that deflection calculations have to be actually calculated to satisfy the limit state of deflection. Now this graph clearly says that this is a span in meters, 0 meter, 10 meter, 20 meter, whereas this is L by D ratio, that is 7, 10, 20, and 26, where L is a span and D is a effective depth. So for cantilever. L by D basically is seven. For simply supported is twenty, and for continuous it is twenty-six. But it is interesting to see that these three things are applicable only up to M equal to uh, sorry L equal to ten meter. Then we can say that L by D allowable. L by D allowable is nothing but L by D basic. Into KT, into KC, into KF. Let us see what these three factors are. L by D basic is already given in table one. We have seen here KT is nothing but the modification factor for tension reinforcement. And here clearly we can see this graph quickly that the x-axis is percentage tension tension reinforcement to PT percentage that we calculate due to the lecture. Whereas y axis is the modification factor K T, and depending on the F S, that is the stress in steel at serviceable loads, which is given by S code as 0.58 F Y, that is yield strength of steel into area of steel required divided by area of steel provided. When we calculate it, when we calculate it, for example, if we calculate it, and our answer is 290, exactly 290, and suppose we are using AP 500 H Y S T bars, then I have to look at this graph, where these values are FS values. I have to look at this graph, and then I have to select the percentage of steel. For example, if zero point eight, then I have to come here, and this will be my modification factor. So the theory clearly says that L by D basic has to be multiplied by K T if only I provide the tension steel. In that case, K C and K F don't exist because there is no compression steel, and it is not a flange structure. Similarly, modification factor for compression reinforcement that is KC factor. That is on x-axis there is a per percentage of compression reinforcement from zero to three percent, and as usual on y-axis there is a modification factor. But instead of KT now it is KC because C stands for compression. So we can use this graph. Thank you.